the Conservative MEP and international trade spokesman David Campbell Bannerman. Morning to Hi. you, Hi, David. Thank you for, for coming in. A bit of context first mm -hmm. about the importance of all of this. Australia, in yeah. the league table of countries that are important trading partners with mm -hmm. the United Kingdom, it's somewhere below 20th. Well, it's, it's, it's about 19, it depends on how you measure it. <laughs> New Zealand, obviously, is slightly smaller as well. Um, yes, but these are important markets. Uh, we should have done these trade deals way before this, actually. Uh, but yesterday we had a vote in the European Parliament. We've agreed the negotiating guidelines of the Council. Uh, negotiation will be the next stage. So I welcome that. I'm off to New Zealand tonight. It's a long flight. Uh, but we are moving ahead. And as you rightly say, you know, the New Zealand deal, is 80% of it is based on Canada, the CETA deal, which is very relevant to the Brexit talks. Well, if we look at Canada, it's yeah. done its deal with the, Euro the European Union. It took, yeah. what was it, seven years to get that, get yeah. that done, which doesn't necessarily give encouragement to those who say we can do these deals in the blink of an, of an eye. But yeah. the Canada deal... Yeah. It does nothing for trade in services, does it? Very well, it, uh, it does well, have a very services little, chapter. It's very, very little. Very little. We'll, and the we'll British economy yeah, depends we'll really more. crucially on services. Yeah. So again, As does the EU economy. So again, we yeah. should keep these outside the European arena, trade deals, in perspective. They're not necessarily the pot of gold at the yeah. end of the Brexit rainbow, are they? Well, uh, the tariffs are important. I mean, you know, the, the New Zealand lamb, for example, is subject to quotas. You know, we, we import a lot of that. Obviously, half of the quota comes to Britain. These things are relevant. And we sell a lot of, of, of land rovers and, and mechanical goods to New Zealand and Australia. Um, it's worth having getting rid of the tariffs. And that's very key because they're still operating World Trade Organization rules. Um, and so there are quite heavy tariffs in certain areas. Uh, so that's worth having. But you're right services has to be a big bolt on but it's very important to New Zealand as well and New Zealand is not just agriculture a lot of it is now services and that's very relevant to the UK and we want to protect the city of London but that's all doable and I believe in a super Canada deal which is taking CETA but bolting on a lot more on services. Okay look you mentioned lamb if you want yeah. to talk about lamb you're yeah. an east of England MEP you've yes. got a lot of farmers I on, your, on your patch yes how do they feel about the idea of agricultural product pro produce including lamb yeah. flooding into the market cheap from countries like Australia yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the, there will be some concern, and, and British lamb producers have shown concern about the New Zealand deal in particular. Well, you say concern, uh, David. I, I, the the Welsh that. First Minister that said it's yeah. going to be the end of farming in Wales. Well, I, I don't believe... It depends what our agricultural regime is going to be post-Brexit, to be honest. You know, we signed up to the same uh, regime, the same uh, single farm payments, uh, and I think we can look after our farmers but open up our markets. You know, it, it, the, the quota is pretty restrictive on New Zealand. Zealand lamb, uh, for example. And I think a lot of the consumer, what about the consumer? Uh, we have to look after the British consumers. We can drive down food prices post-Brexit by being outside the customs union. Yeah. I mean, look, look you're a great Brexiteer. You believe passionately in your, <laughs> in your cause. But yes. There's a fair chance you will either have to deal with angry farmers. I don't know if they're going to be burning tyres on the M20 <laughs> or not, but they're going to be angry. Or you're going to be dealing with consumers looking at prices in, in the supermarkets going up and up? Well, I think we can look at the whole area of drive up quality in, in uh, the shops and supermarkets, you know, open up markets for our farmers as well as New Zealand and Australian farmers. You know, I don't think it's a zero sum game and nor should it be looked that way. You mean you can upset everyone at the no. same time? <laughs> well, certainly, hopefully not. No, that isn't the case. But, you know, we do believe in free markets and, and liberalised trade. I mean, the, it's the EU is very resistant, by the way, because of particularly French producers. They're already saying that they'll exclude sensitive products uh, f from Australia and New Zealand in that trade deal. But the British trade deal that follows Brexit may not do so. But we will look after our farmers, absolutely. Uh, Tim and, and, and Jenny, when you yeah. listen to the, the debate that's been going on this week on the subject of trade policy, the European Union, and, and getting to Brexit Day in March of 2019 with a trade deal done and dusted, with every other deal done and dusted, not just in... Uh, March 2019, but months and months before that. How much of that are you uh, convinced by? Oh, this is, this is like being asked to clap your hands if you believe in fairies, and I'm sorry, I can't clap my hands. I mean, we know perfectly well, well that we aren't going to that we aren't <laughs> going to get any kind of trade. Tim deal. does believe in fairies. Well, yeah. if, if he thinks that a very every time you say that, that one are, dies. That are that are good. That a relatively <laughs> simple Canada deal should have taken seven years, and it's not yet resolved. We cannot get these kind of detailed trade deals 
and they will not happen. And even if they were to happen, they wouldn't be to our advantage. At the moment, the, there's been research shown that we're going to lose a quarter of our trade, the value of our trade in services, and one fifth of our mm. trade in goods with the EU if we leave. Mm. And if we make fantastic trade deals with the 10 other biggest economies in the world, including the United States, including India, we will make up one tenth of the value of what we're going to lose. And the, and the other point is that yeah. that will take years. And at the moment, we're entirely ignoring the thing which matters a great deal more than tariffs, which is whether we stick to EU regulations. Because at the moment, the Canada deal, deal has nothing mm. to say to that, which means that if we say are trying to export our irons to France in the future, and we're not sticking to the EU's regulations on yeah. irons, the French will stop all our goods at the border and search them, which is why our customs are not going to be able to keep up with all the demands that Brexit okay. is going Tim, to bring in. Explain to you, Jenny, why she's wrong, why there is a Tinkerbell and why it can uh, work yes. very, very well. Well, I'm not why saying there is one. I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded. Uh, I'm rather excited about this discussion about trade because thus far I think Brexit's been talked about in political terms too much. It's about people punishing each other. Britain's done this terrible, silly thing and you're going to get hurt for it. But trade doesn't work by those rules, does it? Beneath the politicians are constituencies of businessmen and voters who want trade because trade enriches everyone. And that's what the next stage is going to be. Once we leave the EU, that's what's really going to be exciting is the fact that we'll now be able to make money with other people. And one of the great things we have working to our advantage is EU regulatory compliance. We have exactly the same regulations as the EU. So whenever the EU does a deal with someone else, all we have to do is come up behind, as we were doing with Japan just recently, mm. And saying, Although those, when you've signed those that, rules, we're next. Those rules and those standards could change over time, and we're going to have to change we would have to along with them, or we lose the market. That's we'd the have argument. Maybe you can have flexibility. When Britain's in charge in. of its own regulations, when it's outside the EU, it has exactly that mm. flexibility to adapt mm. to developing markets Good. that the EU Last word with you. Yeah, um, I'll just say the Canada deal actually only took three years to negotiate. We start from a very different place. We don't have 16,500 goods tariffs. We have no tariffs. We have no quotas like on New Zealand's AM. We're starting from a different place. And all our laws are convergence, hence the Repeal Act or the Repeal bill uh, you know all the EU laws will be and UK what we're law. about to do on leaving the EU is to diverge on everything and the minute we diverge on a single regulation the, the EU but that means that in practice the EU is then going to have to check our imports of everything that we send to them in case we're no longer sticking to their it's all, regulations. It's all, it's all agreeable. I mean, uh, no, remember, it isn't. remember, no, it, it remember, can't, it's can't only, you're only ways. talking about just that over 20% of our economy is international trade anyway. 80% is within the UK mm. and the rest of the world, well, I mean, you know, 90% of the growth is going to come from outside the Europe. Okay. David, you're, David, you're back. Not on the latest. Back. David, your, your <laughs> confidence is infectious. Thank you. So maybe, maybe that's a good Let's thing. Thanks for coming. Yeah. David Campbell Bannerman. Two years to find out how I'll it's working. I think we'll probably have him well, back we'll before two years.